So in the previous video, we looked at how to create a pivot table and use it to compare averages and that type of thing. And so that was um, averages were things we could have gotten out of the table row uh, in Excel, or we could have gotten with descriptive statistics in Excel. But um, in those ones, you'd only get one thing at a time, whereas the pivot table it simplified our life because we could then go and look at at the whole pattern among multiple things at once. One of the other things we did previously was how to we constructed histograms to summarize a pattern of data. So can we do that type of thing in a pivot table? So why don't we go and if we want to build a histogram around that salary data? So let me go and drag salary data put it into my rows. So these are all, whoops, excuse me, the, go up to the top. Here are all the different salary figures that we've got available to us. Let me make sure I've got all of it. Let's clear any filters from it, okay? And the, I'd like to know how many have these different values. So why don't I just go up here to ID, Put that in there. So this is going to be the count of those sorts of things. Now, of course, I don't want the ones that are blank. So we'll just take those out, ones that didn't tell us their salaries. Okay. Now, uh, this isn't giving me a count. It's giving me sum of ID. So we go up here, go to value field settings. I go count. Okay. So five people gave me a zero, one person gave 500, one 800, or three at 2,000 and so on all the way up. So this is a frequency table, and I could actually turn it into a chart if I wanted to. I could make it into a pivot chart. And it says, okay, there it is. And I can click okay. <laughs> um, I'm gonna take out some of the detail here a moment. Okay. <sighs> this isn't much of a chart because it's just that each of those different values, how often they are. And the, what we did before with a frequency distribution is we, we group values together. So why don't I go over here, pick one of these guys, and see if I can group. Hey, it says I can. It says starting at zero, ending at 650,000 and going in steps of 100,000. That's not what I want. I want to go from 20,000, uh, maybe... Let's go from 10,000. And I'll just go up to 120,000. I'll just go in steps of 10,000. That seems to make more sense. Grouping. Whoa, look at that. It's created a frequency distribution for me. And it's told me there are 78 that are blank or less than 10,000. And there are nine that are above 120,000. So, okay, I really don't care about this group here. If I want to, I can hide them. So I can take this one right out. I can take this guy out, these strange ones, because I didn't want them. And there's my new histogram. And when we did histograms before, we wanted them all to have the columns stick together. So I could go and select the columns and I can go down here to, oops, nope, that just selected one of them. I wanna select all of them. Excuse me, let's try this again. There, I've got all of them being selected. So I'll format data series. So we want the series, not just one data point. And I've got a gap width over here. I want it to be zero. And let's get this out of my way. And there I've got, a proper histogram. Neat. Well, last time we also wanted to say, could I actually compare groups? Could I look at uh, different programs? So I could look at, you know, we did it, we could do it one by one. We could go over here and, and click and see, just give me the students in business. And so there's their histogram. And I could do the one just for arts. 
But maybe what would be better is, let me just make sure I've cleared that filter, is take program and put it over here. Ooh, what have I got? Okay, that this table is pretty squished. So it's given me a frequency count of each of the different programs that I've got. And you remember before, I got rid of some of these. I don't want not applicable or other. And science and engineering, I grouped together before. Let me group them. Let me squish my groups back. Okay, I'm going to call this group science plus engineering. Okay. But I'm not sure on my chart who's what, so I may want to have to go back up here to my. I'm in a chart at the moment. Okay, when you're in chart, you can format it or you can design it. In design, I can add chart elements, I can change layout. Let me just change, because I deleted a little table over here that told me about programs there. That's helpful. Now I can see arts, business, science. And if you want to remove the gaps, we could go and, and do that sort of thing again. I'm just going to leave them for now. But here I've got a pattern. Notice how yeah, we got problems here. See these ones for science? They're all very low. And why? Well, let me look at my table. Let's see if you can scroll down here. Ah, uh, see? Science and engineering, 115 students. 275 in business. 264 in arts. And when you look at these frequency counts, that's it's we've got fewer science students. So that's why in the table they look smaller. So I should change this in my table. I shouldn't be using frequencies. Go over here to count. Go to value field settings. And go over here to show values as. So I've got count, show values as, show values as, no calculation. I want, these are out of the each column. Hit col percentage of column total. Okay busy with all these decimals, but it gives you an idea. These add up to 100%. These are all the art students, all the business students, all the science students. And so we can see in the 50 to 60,000 range, we've got about 17% of arts, about 17% of business, but about 30% of science are in that group. What's it look like in my chart? There we go. I've changed this to percentage. I'm going to Take that out and sort of clutter for me. Um, I can put down here, relabel stuff. That here I could have a title. Students, students expect to earn more. Or you've got here. See the the gray bars. See how. Oh high they are at this end and how little they are at the bottom. Look at the blue ones. They're big at the bottom and they're not there at the top. So the pattern that you see here, you might want to put as the story at the very top of your picture. But this, this is a histogram. This is three histograms. And so we've done them quickly and easily with inside a pivot table. Neat stuff. But, um, a lot easier than using a standard histogram function. We're done.